Hi. What's up, everybody? All right, we are uh, live. I am stoked for the Kill the Noise session. All right, guys, while everyone is tuning in to the live stream, we're going to hang out and chop it up a little bit. But hey, I haven't seen you guys for a while. How have you guys been doing anyway? Ladies I'm, first. I'm good. I've been doing good. My kids are less crazy than they were a year, year ago. So I'm, <laughs> I don't know. They're growing. <laughs> So please tell me about that. I'm waiting to, I'm waiting for my kids to get less crazy. It seems like they keep <laughs> escalating and getting crazier. I know firsthand too. Lacey and, and Josh and her kids were, they stayed at my house actually in front of my house. And oh, uh, that's right. And I saw the wildness and they're just, look, they're happy kids running around having fun. And you two are the best parents, man. I had fun with you guys. <laughs> I was bummed you had to leave so early. Oh my gosh, we don't really know what we're doing, but <laughs> none of us. How, it works. how in the heck did you guys stay with crazy kids in a sprinter van? See, I, I don't know how <laughs> that happened. You know, it's easier actually because I can see them and they're locked in there, and some of them are trapped in there, and they can't like. So it feels easier. To be, <laughs> like we're doing school. Listen, <laughs> for real. Well, hey, if you, guys just, if you guys just tuned in, this is uh, the Whosoever's Kill the Noise session. Um, we have uh, Lacey Sturm. We have uh, Lacey Sturm, which is a, a vocalist, and you've done many albums. You used to be the lead singer of the band Flyleaf. We have Brian Head Welch, a guitar player from Corn, Sir Hetty in the corner. And then we have Sonny Sandoval, the lead singer of the band POD. And we're going to get this stream going in a little bit, but we're going to let a couple more people tune in. So thank you guys for joining us. This is our first session mm -hmm. and i i've known these these four for it's been a long time now i think like 13 years and like uh, this stream is going to be sick i cannot believe that we're all just still chilling doing things together it's just amazing still trying to cool. figure out this twitch thing <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this is how we started actually we started on twitter and i was did, like yeah. this is the first time i had a I, I did Twitter was with whosoever. So I was like, oh, let's start a Twitter account. What is it? Yeah. <laughs> always always hey, I got a story to jump on. Quick story. Yeah. Me and James Schaefer, monkey from corn, went to uh, school and we did guitar class when we were um, seniors. And there was just these few people that guys were in there, girls, some girls, but uh, we flocked and we had a group of like three or four or something. And we all would always jam on guitar in that class together. And one of the guys actually start ended up going to San Francisco and started Twitter. What? No way. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. I think he got like a little um, like uh, shafted and, and kind of kicked out. But he was one of the – he actually named Twitter. It was T-W-I-T-T-R. Wow. <laughs> Crazy, right? Oh, world. Bakersfield, man. Bakersfield. It's on the map, dude. You <laughs> so, so, so the only thing to come out of Bakersfield is corn and the guy who started Twitter. Yep, that's it. That's, that's beautiful. It. That's not, that's not that big of a <laughs> and Buck Owens. That's amazing. Buck Owens. Yo. What, about SD? what about SD? What's coming out of SD? Everything. SD? Everything that's hot list. and fresh. What's that? Fresh. <laughs> Everything that's hot, fresh. On his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, everybody right, knows so I love so, my city. <laughs> yeah, I think we have a couple more. I think we're going to wait one more minute, and then we're going to just go live with this. Hey, you guys, again, I am stoked to have you guys here. Um, you guys have been a big influence in my life. Um, you know, with even starting the Whosoever's, man, 13 years ago, here we were. Um, I left uh, Circa Footwear. I was managing the skate team over there doing the marketing and, and music festivals and stuff. And I ended up in, I ended up calling Sonny. And basically we connected because we were friends. Uh, we, we, we made connections uh, down at Circa um, years prior to that. And we reconnected and um, we just like, he came up with this idea of this uh, a worldwide movement called the Whosoever's. And it was just uh, he, when he when he told me, I see like just a people coming together under one umbrella from all different walks of life, 
all uh, different parts of the world and coming together and telling their stories and uh, basically encouraging people and letting them know that God loves them. I just thought that was just one of the the sickest ideas and concepts. And at that point, we we, we came together and, and decided we were going to do something. We had no idea what the heck we were going to do. Shortly mm-hmm. after that, I end up in Texas with Michael Guido and I'm um, at backstage at a, at a concert at a, a, a fair with uh, Flyleaf. And that's where I meet uh, Lacey Sturm, which was the lead singer uh, of Flyleaf back then, which is an epic band. And uh, we connected and it was, uh, we just, I think we just really uh, resonated with each other at that time. And we decided that we were all going to join forces and do a music festival. And also during that same time, I, I got a book at I got a book and it was uh Brian Head Welch from Corn right here, the, the guitar player. And I read it and I just remember reading that book and that thing just empowered my life and and it impacted my life so crazy and it prepared me. It was like a tool basically that prepared me for what was to come in my life. And I remember reading your book, Head, and I was just like, dude, if I ever re- if I ever wrote a book. It would be like this because the tips and the lessons uh, that I learned that you kind of laid out in your faith walk, it uh, it just helped me. Uh, it, it gave me a jump start. So when things were happening in my life, I was like, I remember reading about this. I remember reading about this. And even though we're in two different walks of life, you know, you're 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 a, a guitar player of a massive uh, band, and I'm a dirty uh, uh, skateboarder. Um, <laughs> we uh, we shared a lot of the same issues with bad relationships and and addiction and, and, and different things. And next thing you know, we all connected together and we did that massive music festival in Las Vegas, exit Las Vegas. Um, that was massive. And uh, it was a high impact. And now 13 years later, the whosoever's movement has, has grown into a worldwide movement. The just fulfilling what Sonny's concept was of it. And now here we are doing this live interview and I wanted to bring you guys on to, to, to have the first thing, the first session with you guys, because again, you guys have really impacted my life in, 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 uh, in many ways that you guys will, will never know. And I could tell you over and over and over, mm-hmm. but I think it's important that people hear about you guys because there's many people that are streaming right now that are watching this and they're in all different parts uh, they're all in different situations in their life. You know, we've seen with the pandemic and everything that's been going on, you know, the rise of, of depression, suicide, anxiety, um, fear has entered many people's lives, um, uh, divorce, broken relationships, broken homes. Um, so many of these different um, things that are going on that a lot of people have reached out to all of us through our DMs and emails um, talking about things that they're going on that are going on in their life. And recently I wrote a book called kill the noise and it was my whole concept. Like I said, after I read head's book, I said, if I ever write a book, I want to write a book. That's a tool that will inspire people that no matter where they're at in their life. And you all met me when I went, you know, 13 years ago and I was in a dark place, but um, I wanted to write a book that could show everyone, no matter where they're at, that, their life can be changed, that there is a God of the universe. He exists. He's not religious and he can get a hold of our life and he could transform us and do great things with it. So I created this book called Kill the Noise, which I've sent to you guys. You've read it. You read some of the chapters and basically it's a tool. It's a tool that will inspire people to grow. And you guys are actually all in my book, obviously, because it (laughs) talks a lot about you guys. I named one chapter after one of Lacey's songs and And, um, you know, it just talks about how the whole movement was created and then it teaches people how to overcome obstacles in their life and to grow in their uh, relationship with God and do great things. So, but before we get into any of that stuff, I want the listeners or the, what is this? Listeners, followers, uh, (laughs) watchers, viewers, viewers that that, that are watching right now. I want to go. Through, I want to talk to each one of you guys and and break down, ask you about your guys' projects because again, you guys have not only influenced me to be a better uh, a person, but you have encouraged me just in all the projects and your guys' work ethic and everything that you've done creatively through film, through uh, uh, books, through uh, music, obviously because you guys are, are are musicians, 
and art, et cetera. So I'm going to, I'm going to pick out Sonny out of the gates to start this, uh, a conversation, Sonny. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you know I know that you're the lead singer of the band POD, but you know we might even have some new people that that aren't familiar with you. Tell us a little bit about POD, and I love the name Payable on Death was what it said. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, Payable on Death. I mean, that's um, you know that's, that's what happened. I I I didn't grow up um, having a relationship with Jesus when I came to faith. It was real. Um, you know, it was, it impacted my life. Um, it changed me for the better. And um, I think I was just, um, this freedom that I had, that I was free, you know, when when I got to know who Jesus was. And then my, really my, my heart was just that people would know, um, you know, this, this Jesus that I'm, I'm beginning to, to learn about and understand and know, um, you know, and I'm not, I'm not like a, I'm not a showboat kind of guy, you know what I mean? I don't like to be in front of people or the microphone, that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, my brothers were already in a, in a band. They were playing keg parties and stuff like that. And they were Christians and they were they were going just as hard as everybody else, you know, but they would tell them that that, that God loves them. And, you know, it's kind of like what we're doing, you know what I mean? Just relating to, to people. Um, and then when I gave my life to, to Jesus, they had asked me if I wanted to be in the band. It was nothing that I wanted to do, but through certain events and kind of signs and wonders, uh, I said yes, you know, because I, I knew that even though I didn't completely understand everything I was going through, I hadn't read through the whole Bible, you know what I mean? I was not a scholar, I'm not a, I'm not a preacher. Um, I just knew that music related to people. Um, and, I, and, and I was always influenced by bands that would get up there and were real and they would say it like it is, whether you liked it or not. I always respect, respected bands like that. And then, um, Really, I never thought I'd leave San Diego. It was just more about um, trying to relate to the people in my own community, you know, through music. And that was just a journey, learning learning about my faith, following God, um, and also learning how to be in a band. Like I said, it was nothing I had planned to do. I was learning. I'm still learning. Um, but I think God really just honored, um, you know, our faithfulness and that, that call that he placed in my heart. And... Um, we were able to go and do some really cool things, you know, and, and I'm grateful that our songs have been around the world and it's touched a, a lot of people. And, um, you know, that's, I can call it quits right now, you know, yeah, <laughs> really, yeah. Cause, cause that was just, uh, that was the whole point almost 30 something years ago. So here we are with the same heart and the passion to reach people. Um, again, not to condemn people or not to tell people how to live their lives. It's just, uh, um, you know, we all know what it is that we found in Jesus and it's super special and it's selfish of us not to to share that with the world. And I think when the whosoever is, it was more just to do that in in our art, our craft, whatever your skill is that relates to people. Um, and like you said, with, with the whosoever's, um, when we started the whosoever's, I think I was just really bitter at the term Christianity. And, and I think it, it, I was confused because uh, there were so many different people in this world that called them Christians, but I don't think they really know who Jesus is. And so yeah. I think when when the whosoever started, it was just like, man, it just really so. I like the way you say it, Ryan. It says it's the anybody's, you know, it's yeah. from from bums to presidents. You always say that. I, yeah. I like when you say that. It just means that any of us can come come to to Jesus just the way we are. Mm-hmm. Um, and here we are, still doing that thirty years later, just trying to tell the the good news to people that will listen. You know, um, exactly when I when I met you. It was cool because I started like just kind of watching the way you lived your life and the way you carried yourself and you were never a, a, a religious nut and, and just like weird or made things <laughs> awkward. You know what I mean? And and that's kind of the way I, I like to roll as well as, you know, cause you know, you gotta be out and about in, in culture, you know, like the yeah. skate contests and art events and just around people and you don't want to scare people away. You want to, um, you want to be able to develop relationships and hang out. And yeah. I just seen the way you rolled and you have a, you've had a, a, a great name in the music industry. I mean, people say nothing but hype, uh, great things about you of how you've walked your faith out and been available mm-hmm. for people. And that's, what's been so rad is you've used your platform to just be, you truly are there with the people. I've seen you yeah. pr- hanging out with people, talking to people till hours after uh, everyone leaves the venue, you're still out there in front of your bus talking to people. And that's, that's what's been that's what's been so cool is to to actually have conversations. 
So you have tons of how many albums do you guys have out now? I don't know. So 30 years worth, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of albums. All wow. right. So so everything with COVID vibes. Yeah. Um are you what, what's the next tour? Do you guys have any uh, uh, idea of what the open states being open right now? Dude, everything from 2020 got moved to 21. And so I was really looking forward um, to going back to Europe uh, this summer with all the cool festivals and stuff. But um, it looks like all that's going to be canceled. I think the the, the U.S. is probably um, ahead as far as um, moving forward goes. And so I, the last I heard was like September. So we're shooting to, to do a, a run here in the States in September time. Um, because this uh, this is the 20th anniversary of our album Satellite, so we had big plans, you know, special release, all kinds of cool stuff. Let's just tour the record, and then here we are, still almost over a year not touring, stuck on COVID vibes. So it's just a waiting game, you know. It's it's I've, it's, it's hard. <laughs> I've heard 19. Is. I've heard 19 states have opened up a couple of days ago. I think it's no masks, but there's still. It's no, not like 100% capacity, yeah, in, in a rock club. You know what I mean? It's still, they're still going through all the protocols. You know, people still going to have to wear, you know, yeah. masks, whether they're that close. And, you know, you can only do 25 to 50%. So it's still a hassle. You know, that's so not rock and roll or punk rock. You know what I mean? But everybody wants to be safe and follow the, the rules. And we all do. Um, but you also have all of us who just, you know, appreciate what we do and want to get back to work. Heck yeah. I agree. Um, what about any music? Are you guys working on any? Do you guys have any new stuff coming out soon? Yeah, we're POD's writing right now. I've been going back and forth to Hollywood um, with Marcos and um, working on some tunes with the the group, the heavy that we did with the last record, and um, so just getting things going. Um, all through last year in quarantine, I, I really had some quiet time to just sit down and work on a lot of reggae music that I've been wanting to do for years. So, you know, what better to do, you know, what to do with your time when sitting in quarantine than to just, you know, take out your, your stuff and just start going for it, writing tunes, you know? So I'm that sitting on a bunch of that, just kind of waiting to whatever. I don't want it to interfere with POD. And these days you don't know if you should do stuff with the label, if you should just do it on your own. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of ways of getting your music out there. And, um, and so I'm just, Whatever, whatever happens. I just want people to hear it. I'm excited about it. That was it's my for me. that was my next question because you went on a whosoever tour, the Kill the Noise tour, and we were bumping that reggae uh, <laughs> in the car, and then even yeah. at the skate park up in Taft, California. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. okay, we're here at the skate park. Everyone's getting ready. All of a sudden, I hear the reggae start busting. <laughs> I look over, Sonny's <laughs> over there, Israel with the big dreadlock. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh man, this thing turned into a reggae party. Yeah, and, right. Yeah, it was really sick, though, man. It was really sick. Uh, do you guys yeah. know about? Have you guys heard about his stuff, Head or Lacey? His reggae stuff. I mean, just what, just what he, you know, every now and then in POD, you know, comes out. Yeah. No, he has full on oh, reggae album. And yeah. I know that Sonny's been talking about it for years, so that's yeah. all I know. He has. <laughs> he's like, has. out already. He has, <laughs> right. Know? He's been talking yeah. about it for years. I'm gonna do a reggae. Well, at first you thought that the whosoever should have been the name for a reggae band. Oh yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right. I thought I thought the uh, because the whosoever sounded it just sounded like a people to me, you know. And reggae music yeah. always, I always saw reggae music that way, just this community. And so the whosoever's and reading that in in scripture and stuff sounded like a, a, a people, you know. So I said that'd be a sick name for a reggae band, but you know, it still is. All right. Well, here I want to I want to let the watchers, the followers, know what's going on here. We have Sonny Sandoval. He's the lead singer from the band POD. Multiple sold millions and millions of albums. We have Brian Head Welch, a guitar player from Corn, and Lacey Sturm, formerly from the band Flyleaf, but now you have your own solo uh, project called Lacey Sturm, and the music is epic, <laughs> more epic than Flyleaf. It just keeps getting better and better and better and better. <laughs> I love I love Lacey stuff, man. I'm 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 a huge fan. I love it. Ever since I heard it, right when I first gave my life to God, some dude came up and goes, "Hey, man, check out." I had Head's book, and someone gave me the Flyleaf album. That's that's how this whole party started. And I already met Sonny, so you know it is what it is. So okay, but hey, before we uh before we end this with you, we are also on tour, and I heard this dubstep, this dubstep mm. song. 
and it was sick. And it was a POD song. What the heck is that all about? Um, it was a Youth of the Nation uh, remix. Uh, like I said, we're celebrating our 20th anniversary of Satellite, and so we've um, we've had a few DJs do some cool stuff, um, other artists that that want to participate, and we're still working on it. I, the The plan is later on in the year to to do a re-release of that record with just a lot of cool B-side stuff and just some yeah. really, you know, just a really cool package. But yeah, that song, I'm not really, you know, I've, I think I've gotten more into EDM and dance just hanging around you guys, you know what I mean? Cause you guys are always bumping it. I like it, but it's a lot of it is just, it just, it like bombards my brain. You know what I mean? There's so much going on. And then, and then when we start, when we hang out and you, that's all you guys play, I'm like, this is kind of cool. You know what I mean? So I really kind of appreciate a little bit more, but that that tune is definitely um, in that in that realm right there in it, but it bumps. Yeah, it's it's like slow. Dubstep's real slow, and, and it's 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 definitely different than the. There's no, so many different styles of the EDM, but when you're gonna go and 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 do parties for high school students, and you gotta <laughs> literally gotta go in, and you gotta start yeah. the party immediately. You need a push of the button, and you just need to get it going and yeah. get their attention, and then you know what I'm saying. So okay, we gotta be uh, able to we gotta be able to start the party in like two seconds. <laughs> and it works great. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Okay, so check this out. Sonny, you obviously know I wrote the book, Kill the Noise. It was a tool that I created. It's been 13 years, and I've been thinking about writing a book where I wanted to create a tool that we could give out to people in the music industry, skate industry, surf industry, just even just whoever, wherever they're at. Because mm -hmm. what we were talking about at the beginning of the stream is that right now with COVID, and life circumstances with depression, anxiety, suicide, identity crisis. Um, people are at crossroads in their life. There's just all these different things that are going on. Fear that people are being um, just um, bothered by. That I wanted to write a book that I can literally show life application and where mm -hmm. it shows, shows in the Bible where you can see the both how they work together. Like this is life application, what you read in the Bible, because people need direction on how to overcome obstacles in their life. And all of mm -hmm. us have, you know, you could just Google any of our names and you will find our stories online. And we've all come from different backgrounds, but we've seen God get a hold of our life. We realize he's not religious. He got a hold of our life. He's cleaned us up, brought us out of depression, suicide, fear, anxiety, um, um, identity crisis, or even our, who, you know, just, all, fear, all these different things that God has got a hold of us and he's changed us. And now he's launched us into our different careers and different platforms that he's used us. And, you know, I know that you guys would feel the same way that you never believe that God, that what God has done in your life and what he continues to do. He, uh, he literally, he does the un unbelievable with just the ordinary, ordinary mm -hmm. men. So I have this book that's coming out. Actually, you can pre-order it now at kill the noise book.com kill the noise book.com you can order it but i have these different chapters that i want to name and i want you to pick one of the chapters names that relates to a chapter in your life so pick any of these names and it would be a chapter in your life that this name would relate to so i have chapter one let the good times roll i'm pretty sure we all <laughs> i'm sure we, i know head i read head's book let the good times roll. I know he can relate to that one. He uh, let the good times roll. Uh, losing control. Crossroads. Punk rock Jesus. Identity crisis. Shiny objects. Destroy all gods. God signs in the storms. Live in the impossible. And no posers. So <laughs> <laughs> pick one. And I want you to get that and apply it to a story in your life that would literally just inspire people and um, help people that, that when they listen to it, they'll relate to it. Yeah. Well, what, what were you going to do, Lacey? I don't want to step on your toes. No, no, you can do Rocks, Rock, that. scissor, paper. No. Okay, okay. Well, I, I think all, all the chapters, I mean, your book's awesome, by the way, and I, I love the way um, it's just so relatable to just your, to, to everybody. Um, and it's, you know, it's not all just your, you didn't just tell all, you know, your story and it's all about you. You really did give uh, practical ways. Um, it really is just um, for anybody to, 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 to pick up and read and then just apply it to their own life. You know what I mean? And um, I, I'm all you guys, I read all you guys' books and I, you guys are, you guys are all amazing and your heart comes through um, in, in all of it. Um, 
all those chapters, if you're a believer, you can kind of relate to every single one of them. Um, for, for me, I, I, I will take the punk rock Jesus. It's just because I remember when we, you had come to the Lord and we were just kind of walking together. I'm, I'm, I've always felt like that. And we've had conversations of a punk rock Jesus. And I remember even telling you about this Jesus and that's how I seen him, you know, cause for me, I, I didn't, um, I, I didn't relate to this, um, you know, westernized, um, white, blonde hair, blue eye, um, you know, American G TBN, you know what I mean? Like just, just on, when you see on TV type of Jesus, no, no offense to TBN, just the things that I seen on TV, the, the, just the, the stuff that still makes my, my, my heart cringe. Um, and so I get it when people are like, dude, I can't relate to that at all. Or, or people that were raised in a, a strict Christian home where you can't do this, you can't do that. There's no freedom. There's just all these rules. And so, you know, what happens to these kids when they're 18, they get to go do whatever they want. They want nothing to do with God. And that's all because of everything that's been thrown at them. Um, and that's how um, the world and how the church and how, you know, they're, even their own families have painted this picture of Jesus. And unfortunately, um, the, most people that I've run into and have deep conversations with, they want nothing to do with that Jesus. Well, here I am, and my Jesus is punk rock. You know what I'm saying? My Jesus is is off the chart. And so when I'm trying to explain that to people, it's not this picture, you know, that that they have in their hearts and in their minds of whatever, of hypocrisy, of just so many years of just just you know, from from murder to just deception to all these things. And that's because they're not reading their scripture. You know what I mean? And when like, I read scripture. Sorry, I want to jump in. Like, but, like, the, cre like, like the crusaders of what you're talking about. Crusa yeah. I mean, everything. So you, so that's, that was me as a kid saying, I want nothing to do with this Jesus. Mm -hmm. But my, you know, as most, a lot of people know, my story when I came to faith was because, you know, my deal with God was I saw Jesus in my mother. And when she died, that was my deal with God where it's like, I don't want, I don't want the world's Jesus. I don't, I, I don't, I hate that Jesus, but this Jesus that I see in my mom and, and, you know, and it's this true authentic love. I want to get to know that Jesus. And then that Jesus became my Jesus, but I relate to, to, to Jesus, you know, and when I read scripture, I see Jesus just, just like us, you know what I mean? He was a man of the roads. The Bible says he had no place to lay his head. He hung out with, you know, your, your common people. Um, and he wasn't religious, you know, if anything, he was anti-religious. He, he went up against the, the religious people of those days more than anybody, you know, and even the government was trying to figure him out. So he was a rebel on every single level. And, you know, he wasn't this, um, you know, like I said, you see on TV that, you know, this Jesus with all this money and, you know, he's flossing over here and he's, you know. He, the Bible says he had no place to lay his head, and and he was, he built relationships with real people, um, and it was those people that started to understand the mystery of who Jesus was, and that's who I related to, and so I seen Jesus as this complete rebel, and I still do to this day, completely punk rock. So it's like, so why is the name of Jesus still ruffling everybody's feathers, you know, two thousand years later, and it's, and I just believe because it it is the truth. There's nothing else in this world that offends people more than the truth. And you can bring up other religions, you can bring up other things, um, and it does, everybody has, at some point they're cool with it or it doesn't bother them. But you bring up the name of Jesus and it gets under people's skin. You know what I'm saying? Um, so he's still moving and shaking in people's lives and, and, and people are wondering who this Jesus is. And for me, like I said, it's more relating to this, um, this, this rebel. Um, but not only was he punk rock, he came in love and compassion and empathy, and he loved people. He cared so much uh, for people, and that's not the picture you get um, through religion or, you know, the our old church stories and stuff like that. You know what I mean? That, but that is also punk rock the way he did it back in those days because the way the two cultures were set up that you couldn't go touch unclean people and, right. and break bread – and going to houses of this other uh, group of 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 individuals, like they're mm -hmm. from different, you know, you had the Jews and the and you had the um, the uh, the Samaritans, for example, mm -hmm. two different races, and 
they weren't allowed to even be hanging out together and, and Jesus would break bread and be eat with yeah. him. And I mean, it was like completely punk rock, even going and going into these guys' house. It was, it was frowned yeah. upon. So yeah. it was, uh, he is, and, and he, he is, he went against the whole institution, um, of, of, of the religious system at that time, because sure. it was, it was broken. And I would suggest to tell people that are watching this, like, Go read for yourself, and that's remember when we were on tour. At the so Illinois, I told all yeah. those those kids, I was like, "Hey, if you don't believe what we're saying, go read the Gospel of John and see for yourself. If you yeah. didn't just go against the whole religious system, yeah." And, um, and, but he loved people. Yeah. He wanted to break bread and just hang out, and that's what punk rock. People, people that have a problem with Jesus is because it's 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 not Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's it's these religious systems have been put into place, their own hangups with their family, you know what I mean? Uh, whatever, history, all these things, they have a hang up with that, but they've never read about Jesus. But if you pick up the gospels and you read Jesus, even you know, the easiest uh translation, you you really do see his character. It's like I, I don't understand what the hatred is. I mean, as far as these people are concerned, you know, like you don't know who Jesus is, dude. He was a, he, the people love Jesus. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They loved him because he was, he was, he would, he gave himself for them. He was, he was healing them. He was, like you said, he was feeding them, breaking bread, all the things that a good human being should do. So what's your problem with Jesus? If Jesus if was, if he was here right now and he was healing people and feeding the sick and, 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 you know, doing all the same things that he did, We'd be like, dude, this guy is awesome. Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? People, people, don't like all the, people don't like all the junk that no, goes along I, and with I them. still don't. And I yeah. agree too. I don't like all the junk that goes along with them. Yeah. So yeah. we agree on that, you know? Yeah. All right, dude. That's <laughs> sick. That's what's up. Punk rock Jesus. Um, in the book, it's uh there's a, a whole breakdown of more stories of punk rock Jesus. You can check that out. <laughs> and you know what? The best place is the actual Bible to read for yourself. Um, yeah. Now, uh, that is Sonny Sandoval, the lead singer of P.O.D. and co-founder of the Whosoever's. Thanks a lot, dude, for, for being here. This is awesome to even have you on the, the first feed. I know you're busy as well with all the kids. I love kids seeing you guys' faces. Every, I know. It's <laughs> awesome. All right. I'm gonna, we're going to move to Lacey. Yeah. Lacey Stern, uh, before you were the fly leaf, uh, or fly leaf, <laughs> before you were the lead <laughs> singer of the band, Flyly for many years, and now you launched off into your own new project <laughs> called Lacey Sturm. And um, I, I don't know, man. I'm just pumped that you actually have some new music coming out. And I seen your new album. I seen a new uh, a new clip of a of a single coming out. So before you talk about that, why don't you give a little bit of breakdown of how you even got into music and started uh, Flyleaf? How'd you got into this whole thing? Well, I was, uh, my mom was a musician and she was um, very, like she was, she's a dreamer and she always encouraged us to be artistic, I guess, more than anything. I think that was really important to her to instill in us. And so there's always a guitar around and eventually I ended mm -hmm. up learning how to play it, just being there in the house. And I think I wrote my first song when I was in seventh grade and my mom actually recorded it and uh um which was a miracle because we hated each other at the time well <laughs> she'd probably say i never hated you blah, blah, blah. <laughs> anyway whatever it was it was we were fighting you know seventh grade is hard um and my mom wasn't that much older than me she's 16 years older than me so 13 year old and my mom was third 30 i guess at the time yeah. but anyways it it was a rough time for us and uh i feel like i feel like uh the reason why that's one of the reasons i think the reason why i didn't want to be a musician so my mom was one mm -hmm. um you know it was i was resentful because i i felt like it was uh sort of took my mom away from us a little bit you know i mean she wasn't like touring but she would you know trying to trying to follow her dream and i think that i was like i just want you to be home you know um she's still going out playing gigs and stuff and i think just my you know what your parents do you don't want to do i don't know whatever but um but my brother started playing and me and my brother were like best friends back then 
we were 10 months apart. Um, and so we're like, you know, same age for two months out of the year. So we we're really close when we started getting in the same kind of trouble <laughs> before we hated yeah. each other and then started sneaking around doing, you know, whatever and um, having to get each other's back and cover for each other, whatever, became friends and playing music and um, playing Green Day songs. They're super easy. Nirvana, you know, three <laughs> chords, bar chords. And we're like, hey, we could be a rock band. <laughs> and so uh, I think that's how it started. But um, just being with my brother, I think. And then when uh, when it started getting serious, I think, you know, I, 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 I was not a, I was a smart aleck, hateful atheist at the time when I actually got invited to play bass and sing for a band and I was making horrible songs that were just rude, terrible, <laughs> horrible <songs>. rude, <laughs> they're just rude, mean songs. And, uh, <laughs> and then I had an encounter with God on the day I planned to commit suicide. And, um, I was like, I'm not going to do that anymore. It's just not me anymore. Just changed me. You know, I didn't want to do the same things as the band members and me and my brother sort of lost our relationship too for a while. He loves, he loves Jesus. And now he's always <laughs> talking to me about God now, but, um, for a long time, I lost that relationship. And, um, and then I was not going to be a musician. I was just, but I, I thought I wasn't, I actually didn't have any plans for my life. I mean, I planned to end my life. So, um, so when I had this encounter with God, I was like, well, I have another day. I don't even know if I have another day past today, but I guess, why do you want me to be alive? Like, what do you, what do you, whatever you want? Cause you're God, you know, I didn't, I didn't believe before. And now I'm terrified in a sense, you know, like you're ter I was terrified when I met God because I didn't believe and he's real. <laughs> right. You were like, oh shoot. He's actually real. Terrified now in a good way. In a yeah. good way. <laughs> like, oh, there's like, this is you. You made me. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. made all this. Like I knew <laughs> the creator. I, I met the creator. And, um, and, and, and it switched from me thinking everything was just an accident. And I was this burden um, and just wasting space and not succeeding and being happy. So why keep going? to finding out that there's an artist that made everything and there's a purpose. And I was like, and he's, he's real. God's real. And he's terrifying because he's God and holy and made the universe, but he's also love. He's the, he is love. He is the perfect love. And like, he is everything that we desire of goodness. He's, he's, and, um, so, my response to that experience was, I, whatever you want, what do you want? Like, why am I still here? And, um, and I heard somebody, so I started going to church every time the doors were open because I felt his presence there. I was like, play that song that played when I came up to the mm -hmm. altar, you know? <laughs> and it was in the songs actually that I could feel the Lord the most. And I didn't know what the preacher was saying. I didn't get what he was, I didn't understand. I mean, he said some good things, but it wasn't because of that. And there was no, I, I wasn't friends with anybody there. I looked like a weirdo. I mean, they were scared to let their kids hang out with me. <laughs> yeah, I had purple hair and Mississippi and like Pantera shirt. You know, I don't I like. <laughs> and so it wasn't because I had community. It was because when the music played in the church, I God showed up there. And I was like, let me just sit in the front and not see anybody and just be with God. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's um, amazing yeah so i think somebody you, did give a sermon one time about not about giving your talents to god and not wasting mm -hmm. them and when you see him he's going to be like what did you do with what i gave you and i was like oh, i'll play guitar <laughs> or watch babies or wash dishes or whatever <laughs> i can do those <laughs> things i'll write you poems mm -hmm. <laughs> you know <laughs> so i started playing music just in my room for God. And then somebody asked if I would play for the Christian life club at school. And I was like, y'all have that? You know, what is that? And <laughs> I ended up there. And after I played the song, I closed my eyes. I'm like, it's just me and you, God, you know, just like playing for you. And 
and I open my eyes and the girl in front at the end, she's crying. The happy girl that nobody knows has issues. And I'm like, oh, mm. you did something. Okay, yeah. you want to do this? Here, I'll keep doing it. And that's how it started. <laughs> it's a long story. Dude, that's yeah. amazing. And then it turned into this big band. I mean, you were you were headlining. You guys were ex exploding. Um, yeah, I met the guys. 2009. At, yeah, the guys. I met Samir and Jared at a, at a church. They were in a church youth group, 15, 16 years old. And I'm just, they played guitar. <laughs> they were friends. I actually tried to join Samir's band in the beginning. He kicked me out. And then. Um, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm texting him right now. Then their band broke up. And so I was like, let me call Jared and see if he wants to be in the band. And then Jared's like, can I bring Samir? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. so, That's amazing. Samir came and they were magic together. And so we just, and James was in a Christian rock band before that broke up. They kicked, he was playing keyboards and he got kicked out of the drum. And so he was, he wanted to record whatever I was playing on the guitar. And I was like, why don't you play drums? And he's really good at that. So that's how, we, and then Pat came way later, our bass player. Um, he was in another band where he was like blowing fire and he played like <laughs> Latin music, like style music. And he was just a crazy wild man. And uh, he came to our show one time. And we beat him at the battle of the bands. We beat his band. <laughs> so then he's like, he joined our band. I'll join you. I can't <laughs> beat you, so I'll join you. Hey, you guys toured a lot. Like you guys have all been on tour together, right? All your bands yeah. at one at the, one point. The, the first time I met Lacey, we were on we were all on tour with uh, Stain. It was us, uh, Stain, uh, Taproot, and Flyleaf. And then I they I met them. I went and watched them the first night. I'm like, dude, these guys rock. And then we we hung out and talked. And then that's when I found out they were Christians. I didn't even know that they were Christians. At that point, I'm all I was all jaded, you know what I mean? <laughs> like the industry, my walk with God was just like lukewarm. I was just over so many things. And then they're, you know, coming in, they had this like spunk to them, you know what I mean? And I just but I just remember being blessed by them because I'm like, you know, there's there's other bands that are coming up that have the same passion and the same, you know, heart to to reach people. And so it was it was a blessing for me. And then we we hung out the whole tour and stuff, but like I said, I was just I felt like the old jaded guy at the time. <laughs> I was so nervous to meet Sunny. I was like, "Oh my God, here's Sunny! Oh my God, I don't know what to say." Oh yeah, that was, was such so a it was such. <laughs> hey, you guys ended up in New York at the uh, Times Square, right? Weren't you guys? Did you guys oh, do some was, music Times Square? That was a long time later. Yeah, I was actually with Love. Yeah, I was after. Uh, yeah, I was. <laughs> I'm like, hey, Lacey, what are you doing here? <laughs> Dude, crazy. Yeah. I'm two times. Story. You want to tell, can I tell a funny story about Sunny the one time when I first met him? Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> yes. So they had a tattoo guy there, and he was giving everybody tattoos, and I couldn't afford a tattoo. We didn't have no money. We're raiding right the dressing rooms after every show. You know, I think Stain had some insurance in there, like butter pecans. <laughs> <laughs> like, You're raiding everybody's green rooms. And we always had those, yeah, because we were in the van at the time. The 88 mm -hmm. Club bag and van, James and Jared yeah. put bunks in the back. And and uh, we didn't have no money. And you're like, Do you are you gonna get a tattoo? And I'm like, Oh no, you know, I can't afford it. You're like, Well, listen. And I and I'm listening because you are like <laughs> that's from PD. You're like, listen, if you want a tattoo, I'll pay for it because <laughs> tattoos and i'm like what about tattoos <laughs> and he goes tattoos are cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, they're, they're okay. cool i'm gonna pay <laughs> now i totally disagree <laughs> <laughs> tattoos are not cool anymore <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing i'll buy you a tattoo that's <laughs> sick Yes, Sonny. But I was waiting on this sage advice about tattoos. <laughs> and he's like, that's so cool. <laughs> okay. You should get one. <laughs> All right, Lacey. So funny. Lacey, what's yeah. up? What, you have new music. You have new okay. music coming out. When's it come out? It's already, I mean, well, their State of Me is out. We did a video for that. We, um, that was a mystical experience. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> Josh made it. Josh did it. He actually helped to do the video here at our house. Unbelievable. 
we got caught up to heaven and went to hell and got back to heaven and that's what happened. <laughs> hey, hold on, her husband Josh pr produced it and mixed it and he's so talented it blows yeah. my mind. He's just like, I, I want to produce and mix and I'm going to learn how and then it's crazy. <laughs> I'm blown away by it. He's a natural. He's so funny. He's once he, he'll he'll make you feel like he can't do nothing and then all of a sudden he comes out like it's like it's like that looks just like that, you know, fifteen million dollar, whatever much money they spent on the video. The, I'm so sick all around me, and and yeah. the the, all, the other one again with the fire all together in one video. I'm like, what you what you do? Spend nineteen dollars on that video? So. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Josh did the video too and the music, right? He, he felt, yeah. He recorded and mixed it. Yeah, and he did yes, and he's he's a little like. He gets a little red face when we talk about it. I'm like, you did it all. You're the record label. He does, you are yeah, he not. does it all. <laughs> he is. Yep. Yep. And and he, not, he plays in the band as well. Fine. He's he's so fine too. So it's just like <laughs> he's, he's like the whole package is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm really gonna make a blush. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, Lacey. When, when's the full album come out? It's coming out, I think maybe next week. Maybe May? I don't know. We don't, we're still working on it. Right. All, right. all right. We'll be waiting. We'll be waiting for it. Maybe. Hey, so you you got like several books out as well. You have like three. Is it three or more? I did. We did a book deal for three books. So I ended up writing three books, which was good because I had enough information. Because I forgot you had to double space the words. Oh. I didn't know about word count. <laughs> <laughs> I was not a writer. But anyway, I had three books in one, and they were like, maybe we should split these up. You know, maybe you should talk about this stuff later. I'm like, whatever. I don't know. So, yeah, it's true. I had three, three books. First one's about how I, you know, overcame or how God rescued me from suicide the first time I encountered him at 16. Mm -hmm. Second one is about terrible choices i've made in my romantic life and how i ended up meeting josh and um the third is about just how i ended up in flyleaf but you know how to kind of just answer that it's called reflect it's called the return reflections on love and god back so like that mm -hmm. whole response of like responding to his love and what does that look like in your life you know daily and how it led into flyleaf and then leaving flyleaf and new what we're doing here you know every day kind of you know what he's what we're saying yes to today yeah and i you know i every girl that i meet that is dealing with some some hard issues we always send those books to them mm -hmm. because some you know it's like when you when you meet when it's like you need a girl to talk to a girl you know to to, to you do it, it i mean I have a wife just for the record. So uh, <laughs> she tells me, you know, things and it's good that girls talk to girls uh, when they're, when you're, when you're going through some hard times, cause you could relate, you could speak deeper into their lives than, than a man can. So we always send your books to anyone um, that's going through stuff. We're just like, like send them Lacey's book, send them Lacey's book. <laughs> so, and then if it's any guys, you know, I've sent some friends that were in jail. I'm like, send them heads book, send them heads book, you know? Uh, <laughs> so I just have the, I have the two, those are the two, my, those are my two go-to books that I just send out to uh, whether it's a guy or a girl. And they've all, I mean, you always hear just amazing stories after uh, they read them. They're just impacted. And again, as we were saying at the beginning of the show is that because of COVID, what has happened is everyone has been stuck at home and normally I was actually having this conversation today with someone that what happens when you're stuck at home is um, when you, when you, before you were stuck at home because of COVID you're out and you're busy and you're distracted going to concerts and just everyday life skate parks or whatever you're into, but all of a sudden everyone gets shut down. You get stuck at home. And then the issues that you have with your wife or your, your parents or your addiction issues, or just your, let's just say overall your issues all of a sudden they surface because now you're stuck at home. You can't be distracted. Now you have to deal with it as it, as it boils up in your life. And we've seen um, great effects on culture because of this, because of the lockdowns. And that's why we're having this show so we can let people know that there is a way to overcome, you know, this, this whole broadcast is called kill the noise. We started kill the noise. It's the name of our tour. The noise is all the distractions in our life. We need to kill them. We need to destroy them 
so we can hear clearly from the God of the universe so we can live that life that we are created for. Or, or as Lacey would say, live in the impossible. You know, you'll start living the impossible. You'll start living a life that you thought was impossible once you're able to kill the noise. And that's why we have this stream. And that's why we have all you guys on because all of us at one point have killed the noise in our life. That moment that you were, Lacey, just talking about when you said, that's it, God, I'm done. You were suicidal. You decided to kill the noise and switch your whole life. And that's that message of repentance. It just means to, to flip a U-turn. You know, when people hear that word repent, you get all, you know, oh, what the heck? I don't like that word. All it means <laughs> is you're just flipping a U-turn. You're going from one direction, from suicide to living a life for God mm -hmm. and living that life that you were created for. It's just flipping a U-turn, changing your heart and mind and going the opposite uh, direction. So I would suggest everyone that's listening and streaming, get Head's book, get Lacey's book. They will impact you. They have impacted me. And that's what has actually inspired me to create my own book called Kill the Noise. Get it? Kill the Noise. And it's all about <laughs> killing noise in your life so you can find your purpose. And you're going to hear from three different perspectives of what God has done in three peoples that come from three different backgrounds lives. But you're going to see it's the same God working in different ways and in unique ways in all of our lives. And I'm waiting for Sonny's book to come out next. That's going to be the, uh, <laughs> that's, that's the next one. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so, um, I think I will actually, um, I'm going to save this. I'm going to bring you back into the next, uh, question once I get head going, but, um, do you have any guest artist or anyone that we should know about in your new album that's coming out? Guest appearances? Me? Yeah. We, All right, we're not allowed to say. Well, maybe Hank might come. <laughs> maybe a band that you might want to record, and then maybe he could come, you know, hang out. I don't know. Okay, we don't know. Maybe Josh, Josh just said Josh just said he was swamped. I saw a text message that he didn't tell me about on his phone. I was like, what? What? You know, that is, yeah, it's not gonna be to our house and recording. <laughs> I was like, what do you say no for? I was like, maybe he could be on our album. That's amazing. Um, but there was no talking about it. This is news. Actually, this is the first time I mentioned it. So. All right. All right. We're going to wait. We're going to wait patiently Maybe to get Sonny that out. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Well, well you. I think you You called me a while ago, and then you never called me back, so I don't know what's going on there. COVID vibes. <laughs> COVID vibes. Yeah, co okay, okay, that's what it was. Just right. playing, playing on COVID vibes. <laughs> all right. So, again, uh, people that are tuning in, I want to bring you up to speed. We have Sonny Sandoval in the right corner, the lead singer of the band P.O.D., Lacey Stern, formerly the lead singer of the band Flyleaf, and now she has her own solo albums, and they're epic. We have Brian Head Welch, guitar player, of corn and he has actually another project called love and death so he has two bands that we're going to be talking about but again we, we did this stream it's called kill the noise sessions and as i was saying i created a book it's a tool i was inspired by these two in the lower screens um, by their books how they've influenced my life so now i'm going to tell my story how i can influence other people's lives how to kill the noise and to overcome the obstacles in our life, you know, I have these different um, chapter names that I'm going to read to you. And Lacey, this is for you. I want you to pick a name of one of the chapters of my book. And I want you to apply that chapter to a chapter in your life that will inspire people and encourage people. Not that you have it already, but uh, we're going to continue it. So chapter one, let the good times roll. Number two, losing control. Chapter three, crossroads. Then punk rock Jesus. Identity crisis, shiny objects, destroy all gods, God signs in the storms, live in the impossibles, and no posers. Well, what? well, um, I really like the punk rock Jesus, like Sonny said, because yeah, because I feel like that's one of the reasons why when I actually read, you know, I had this encounter with God, but everybody encounter like when. I've heard of different people's encounters with God, but, and some people encounter Jesus, like the son, some people encounter the Holy spirit. Some people encounter the father. Those are different parts of one God, right? He can mm -hmm. show himself in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, but I encountered the creator. So when I opened the scripture, I saw so much in the scripture. You can actually, 
the, also the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is the one that introduced me to the creator, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but I knew mm -hmm. it was creator God, father God. I knew it was the father. And that's actually what the guy prayed for me that was praying for me when I encountered God was the father. He said, father, I appreciate that you wrap your arms around this girl you created. <clears throat> that was his prayer when I had this experience. And so um, with the Holy Spirit and opening the scriptures, I started to see what I had experienced written in there. Like this was the love I experienced. This was the holiness. This was the righteousness. And when I read about Jesus, I just couldn't quit crying. I was like, I didn't know he was this way. Mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. know he was, he loves the people like me. <laughs> he loves the people, mm -hmm. nobody, you know, the people that are poor, the people that are made fun of, the people that are outcasted, the people that nobody wants in their church and nobody wants in their, you know, <clears throat> you know, that are scraping by like he he he's he cares about me like look he cares about those ones <laughs> i could quit i just that was jesus he was he was the reason why i love nirvana for that reason i remember discovering kurt cobain and, and his what he stood for was the anti-rock star you know like kind of like the related to everybody and especially the you know 80s was very materialistic and i in the 90s when grunge came out it was like oh i get to be myself with my thrift store clothes and it's cool <laughs> before it wasn't cool you know yeah. um so punk rock jesus was really um really stood out to me um but also i think the no posers too you know for what does it say no posers is that no, what it is? no posers you don't want to be a poser that's the last thing you want to be in life <laughs> <laughs> well that was a big deal you know like this is what jesus this is why jesus was the everyone else is a poser that with yeah, you know like yeah. we want to to this is everything we want in a human and in, in, in life and in, he is it's in him you know and i and i realized that like and so if you're going after something else, you're going after a middleman, you're not there yet. You know what I mean? You're not, you, but if you go after him, like that's where all of that goodness comes from. Everything and that your desire and you, the adventure, the high, everything that's good comes from him. And so I love that. That's, that's a great title. <laughs> Punk rock Jesus and no posers. Yep. Yeah. And that's, you're absolutely <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, you, you're trying to find your, uh, it's like sometimes you get lost in the things of, when I say the things of the world, it's like the, uh, you get lost in the shiny objects. And what happens is you become a poser and you're posing to be something that you weren't even created to be. And you, you basically lose your identity in that, in that process. And then you have an identity crisis. And, um, yeah, so it's, it's true and it's, it's, it's relatable to all of us and, None of us by any means or any of us are perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, we're all, I know all four of these or all three of you <laughs> uh, <laughs> very well. And again, I've seen you guys walk through, we've been together actually through highs and lows of all of our lives actually mm -hmm. over the last 13 years. And we just continue to keep the faith and keep moving forward and, and um, not being religious, but just reading and accepting the man of the Bible, Jesus Christ, 100% man, 100% God, and believing in the writings and, and actually just watching what he did. And we're just doing it, just living it. You know what I love about, uh, in, in one of the stories where it talked about Jesus uh, eating with the tax collectors, the notorious sinners, mm -hmm. in the in New Living Translation, it says, and there was many uh, like that among amongst him. Like his squad was busted up. It was like this, like <laughs> sketchy crew, um, uh, notorious sinners, um, outcasts. Hey, there's your kid. Mm -hmm. Hey, what up? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm at the office because if I was at home, I would have my kids raging in here right now. I'm like, I'm driving an hour away so I could have peace. Um, they're much younger too though. But yeah, that's that's what Jesus's crowd was. He, he that's how he rolled. So, thank you, Lacey Sturm, for being on the uh, the Kill the Noise sessions, um, and thank you for being a part of. You know, I've never thought thank you for this, but thank you for just coming along. Um, the vision that that Sonny and I uh, had at the very beginning of oh, he came up with the name. I was just like, I can try to make this thing happen, but coming along and with you and head and just helping build this thing and launching it in such a powerful way with us sharing our stories 
way back then and doing those large scale music festivals and just mm -hmm. the relationship and just, you know, my wife loves you and we love you. And just, you know, my wife, she's, she's made friends with all you guys very well. Um, and she loves all you guys and stuff her head. Um, but <laughs> you guys have all, uh, you guys are just really special in our lives. So, uh, that's oh, your segue cool. head. <laughs> Thank you for that great intro. My name is Head. He was just mad yeah. at me because if 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 Ryan ever passes away, then he becomes my wife. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so why, that's why I was setting it up because I mean, uh, I, I, was, I go I go Head. If I die, um, can you take can you marry my wife, please? My kids, can you take care of them, please? <laughs> no, the Bible says. You are you're my brother. You're my brother in Christ. So therefore you take my family. <laughs> it's so uh, wrong, Lacey. It I'm is sorry. wrong. I know Lacey's like shocked by this. Yeah, our no. jokes <laughs> are too much. No, she's not. <laughs> I'm um, just joking. Okay, so hey, head. Listen, you are you are the guitar player of corn. You've uh tell give give the listeners uh, and the viewers a little bit of background of how this whole party started because uh, you guys have grown to be a massive band from the beginning and, and even uh, to now you guys are all over the place. Man, I, I just love what you guys are talking about just who Jesus really is. And uh, there's so many people or religious people out there that just drag his name through the mud mm -hmm. and chase society away from him. And, you know, I, I, I talked to this this uh, young woman from uh, Australia uh, a couple of weeks ago, and she said it perfectly. She was like, I just I just gave my life to Christ and I'm trying to find a church and I've been to a few and all I see is imposters. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I go, I go, you're uh, ahead of the game that you're <laughs> just think if you got into that church and were deceived by them and you stayed there for years. So. Just, you know, I give her applause for having, a, it's a gift. She got discernment to see through the, you know, God doesn't have time for people to be wasting their lives in with these imposters anymore. So, uh, but I love it because Jesus was radical, man. He was, he shook things up and he he used mysterious and, and some, some dark, uh, when I say dark, I mean, just, he was, he was like, really secretive and stuff you'd heal people and say don't tell like don't don't tell them i did this and don't do that you know and all the gospels are a trip because with one person he says some he says things one way and the next person he'll say a different thing you know and it's just like to the person that doesn't want to seek the truth and 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 discover it they'll get confused and but what i love is when the gospels are done Jesus goes and grabs this guy that is murdering Christians. He's helping to murder Christians. And he reveals himself to, to this guy. And the guy is totally changed. And Christ is revealed in him. And he ends up writing two-thirds of the New Testament. This guy that was helping to kill Christians. That's what I love. I love that because he chose the one that should, the, the last person that should have been ch chosen to write the Bible with him, the you know the two thirds of the New Testament. He yeah. chose this guy, and it blows my mind. And what the biggest re mystery that he revealed that this guy Paul revealed was that what Lacey is talking about, what Sonny's talking about, and what happened to me and Ryan, and that mystery is Christ in you. Christ in me, Christ in anyone who wants to come to him. And it's it's the biggest mystery of the human um the the our human experience. And people could say, Oh, I don't believe in Jesus and this and that. I mean, if you just say what what year are we in? We're in 2021. Mm -hmm. Why are we in 2021? Because Christ came and time started over right then, and the way we <laughs> process time. He is so bigger than anybody thinks. I don't care if you're a Christian watching. I don't care if you're a non-Christian. The, the the lie is these imposters are trying to, to, to scare the human race away from Jesus. It's crazy. 
But that's what happened to me, man. And and just, you know, a lot of people heard my story. I don't want to go too much on it because I've been talking about it for 16 years. And, <laughs> but, uh, exactly. But, you know, it's like Sonny and Lacey, they, they found Christ and then they started their music. I started it when I was deep alcoholic and, and drug addict as a kid. I was in my 20s and I started my band and I went, you know, we started Corn. We, we got signed and dreams started coming true. We hit the road. And just that whatever I dreamt about with the party lifestyle, I could do. And and I could take it as far as I wanted, or I could try to be disciplined. And and I tried to be disciplined, you know, in a way where if I did hard drugs, I would just do it for a weekend and then stop. And if I did drink, I would I would not do like alcohol every day. I would just drink 24 beers, and that made me feel like my liver was more happy with me. <laughs> and so all this stuff, you know, but <laughs> As years passed by, I lost the strength to control my, uh, just to, to have that, um, what am I trying to say? That, uh, you know, to, instead of just going, 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 you know, I tried to be disciplined. And as the years passed by, I lost the strength for my discipline. And it really it started to just, it was like, I had the strength where I could quit or I can, you know, chill out, especially when I had my kid, um, Janaea, when she was born in 1998, you know, I had strength just to, to be disciplined when I wanted to quit. But then when she was about four or three or four years old, it's, I got divorced and all this stuff. And I, I just kind of said, screw it all, man. I just was like, I'm just going to go full force. And I was so I was so much in pain. I just wanted to go for it. So I went, you know, everything, Xanax, pills, all Vicodin, cocaine, um, you know, groupies on the road. And then it led to methamphetamines. And I went on a two year methamphetamine binge and I, I got really suicidal. I just I thought my daughter was better off without me and I wanted to end it all. And um, if, if I was just, oh, man, I don't understand how that I, uh, I didn't take my life because I was on meth and I was, you know, people on meth do crazy things and it would have been so easy for me just to end it all. And so, but as a last resort, I ended up in this church and heard about Christ, that he'll reveal himself to you, that you don't have to listen to the preacher to tell you about God, that you can go to him directly. And that, that, that preacher said on stage, he's no more important to God than, than you are, the crowd. And I just, I was listening to him going, wow, do you, you don't even know the bad things I've done. And then he started talking about how God sees everything and that freaked me out. I'm like, oh, just the night before church. <laughs> it like, was shocked, you know, would shock people. And so I just was like tripping out and I, I went on a quest. I went on a journey to dis discover if Christ was real, if that guy was lying, or if he was telling the truth. So my, 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 my mind was telling me, like, receive Christ real quick in the church and then bounce and go home and see if he's real. Because I, I don't know, I was new and I thought I had to receive <laughs> Christ there. So I raised my hand, I received Christ, and I went back home and stayed at home for a while and and just started yell, crying out like, desperation. I am going, I'm having thoughts of leaving my daughter because she's better off without me. I'm. You, you got to show me if you're real. These drugs are going to take me away. That These drugs have ruined my, my, my life and ruined my ex-wife and ruined, you know, and I'm barely hanging on to, to, to be kind of a functioning drug addict so I can at least take my daughter to a park, you know, and give her some kind of a normal life. But I hired nannies and, and my parents helped me a lot. And uh, I was just, I was done, man. I was, I was ready to tap out with life. And um, I just, I just laid it all out there and really just said, show me you're real. Okay. He said, you're real. And if, if he wouldn't have shown me, I would have went, I, I don't know what happened, but I felt uh, something changed inside of me one day. And that's why I want everybody to to know out there. It's not. This is real. What we're talking about. This is not. I mean, you just if you just think about it logically for a second. Do you think if it was just something 
that I, 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 I am imagining? Do you think that I would be doing this for 16 mm -hmm. years and, and, and Ryan and Sonny for, for you know, 30 years or whatever is Sonny or, yeah. and, and Lacey? This is the most realest thing that we've grabbed a hold on in our life. And it's, it's, it's the real Christ. It's not this religious thing. And, and we, we met him and, and he's formed in us and he's changing us. And, and it's just the most craziest, coolest ride I've ever been on. And I will never jump off this ride ever, forever. Mm -hmm. I will never jump off this crazy ride with Christ. So. You know, what I, love, I, I love that you said, uh, you know, it's the real thing ever because we've tried everything. Like I've spared nothing as, as far as the things of, of what the world has to offer. I've tried everything at least twice. And um, once I encountered God, it was a unique thing. It was, it was the real thing. And it's like, there's no going back, you know, it's, it's not religion. And when God reveals himself to you and you actually encounter him, like Lacey was talking about, about the presence and um, just the transformation in your life and how everything changes. It's like, you'll never want to go back, but you got, you can't be around imposters. You can't be around posers. You got to be around the, the people that really want it. The people that are for real about it. You know, remember in the Bible that uh, Jesus did have an imposter and a poser with him. Uh, the biggest poser in the Bible is Judas. He rolled with Jesus. You can read about it. He rolled with Jesus for three years. He saw the signs, the wonders, the miracles. The, you know, he saw the, uh, the, he heard the best uh, Bible teachings ever from Jesus Christ. And even when they were at the table, they still didn't know who was going to uh, deceive them and sell them out for a bunch of cash. And that was uh, a Judas. He never had that transformation, but he, uh, he talked, he just pretended he talked. He was posing. He was poser is posing to be somebody you're not, and that's exactly what he was. Uh, he was doing, but definitely when you encounter him, you'll never, you'll never go back. So, had along this journey, I know you. I know you get over sharing your story, but it's it's always powerful, no matter what, because you never know who's listening. And I guarantee there's a lot of people listening right now that have that have been struggling with addiction and bad relationships, and you know you were married and divorce and broken homes and losing money financially. And there's so many elements to your story. And I would suggest definitely go get his book as well. And he has several, how many books do you have out? Uh, 52. <laughs> I'm just joking. I think I have three. Do you um, have it? Do you have any more books coming out? No, but I really enjoy uh, writing books because I'm like a hermit man. And I could, I would just get, I'm, I'm ADHD and I'll sit there and hyper focus on it for eight hours in a cave, yeah. you know, and not talk to nobody. I love it, man. I love it. So yeah. I, I just, I think I will again because I enjoy it. You know, I just don't have any plans to. Yeah. Well, your books are epic. So keep them coming. I love, I, I always love. And I love your it. book is epic too. This is a perfect yeah. book to, to get people to uh, learn how to kill the noise and walk this journey, whether you're starting it or whether you've been it for years, it's, it's a really good guide for people. So that's why I'm stoked to be doing this Twitch thing with you. Awesome. dude. All you guys. Yes. And you can get it at the kill the noise book.com. It's, it's actually a uh, pre-order right now and uh, it will, it's a tool. It's a tool that you're going to hear stories of all about all of us that are here on the screen and even our other friends and just what God has done and is doing. And it's going to show it's very, I get very real showing how in my, my weakest moments and then these mountaintop experiences and then falling on your face again and then getting back up because that's what life is. It's like you never just arrive and you become this spiritual giant or this, you know, this guy that has no problems. Like life is a journey. It's crazy. And then you get married and then you have kids and it gets crazier and crazier and wild. And it's just a journey, but it's so cool because you just see how God's faithful and his grace is sufficient through these times. It's almost like sometimes you're like, I don't know if I could take it anymore. And then like God just comes through and it's just, I just couldn't imagine like walking with God, walk, going through life without God. That's like, the, that would be the craziest, hardest thing to do because you wouldn't have any hope. You know, you don't have hope in yourself and yourself is the one that gets you into all these problems anyway. So 
You know, mm -hmm. it's not a good thing. But back to you, Head. Uh, you have an amazing film that came out called Loud Crazy Love. It, it's been premiered on TV for months. Tell the world about that film. Everybody needs to go see this. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. It's um, Yeah, it's a documentary about my daughter being born into the crazy world when I was trying to be disciplined, but still going off pretty hard, you know, and the damage done to her and, and um, the healing that took place in my life and her life. And it's got the, the full corn story. It's got my childhood story. It's got, but I love it because it kind of turns halfway through to, um, to my daughter's um, issues that she suffered through, through my choice, even some some uh, Christian choices that I made and being a uh, fanatic in some ways, she still has wounds from 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 those things that I did. And so it's really a eye opening, like um, just a real and very raw um, documentary about just addiction and, and, and uh, pain and a dysfunctional family and putting all that back together. Seeing God turn all that back together and, and making it good again. Not perfect, nope. but good. Yeah. Find so one good. perfect family. Find right? one. <laughs> that, that film, that film is seriously amazing. And just just what you know, meeting you, uh, I met you right when uh you uh you left corner ready and you were at the place in your life where you know, you were losing everything. It was a very crazy place, but that's when Sonny and I reached out and connected with you. And it was cool to watch just this whole, like, we all needed each other. We all need each other still. But mm -hmm. during that time, it's like, we were all kind of, we all needed each other in this, this, this interesting place in our life. And it was just cool just to kind of see where, where everyone's at now. Not that we've arrived, mm -hmm. but right. we've come a long way. We'll just say that on this yep. journey. <laughs> come a long way, man. It's, uh, it's been, it's been real. <laughs> it's been, <laughs> it's been real. This journey, it's been a lot of bumps in the road, man, but yeah. um, just, just walking through it with, with God, I don't know how people don't do it. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't feel like I'm weak because I need this at all. Cause some people use that excuse. I'm not weak, you know, but I don't know how you can walk in this life and just not really have the desire to, to, to know the truth because he will reveal the truth to you if you just ask him. He will reveal the me the meaning, the very meaning of life that we all want to know the meaning of life. Christ will reveal that to you 100 percent You won't know everything 100 percent but you will you will know the meaning of life, which is to be in union with him. And uh because he makes everything okay. And the, at the end of the day, at the end of the life, everything's gonna be okay for us, you know. Mm -hmm. and, when, and when you when you do that's that's what keeps you hopeful you know I mean, we were just saying yeah. like, there's no there's no turning back like uh you know just we can never say it um enough where like dude, none of us on this platform are, are perfect you know we've we've been saved and we know who jesus is we know the truth we've been christians for a long time but th it's such a journey it is such a journey especially you know you were reading off the statistics ryan about the things that people are going through it's like we all go through that. It doesn't mean just because you accepted Jesus that you're not going through those things. You know, this is, I think for me in this kind of COVID time and just the uncertainty of music and whatever, mm -hmm. it's just, um, there's dark times, but, you know, um, it doesn't mean I'm in a dark place, Yeah. but yeah. I'm hopeful. Like, but there, there's times when I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I think I'm done. You know, I know all these things. I know the truth. God is, God is awesome. It's cool, but I think I'm just done with a lot of things. And then you just want to just call it quits sometimes. Mm -hmm. But it's that hope that's saying, dude, I okay, I know you're a good God. And that's I might be going through this dark time in my life, but there's been so many great moments, and God has been so faithful through so many different things in my life that it's just like, dude, I'm just I'm excited for when you know it, it happens again. You know what I mean? You can be in this dark place, but you know, God's going to show up. God's going to come through. He's going to take care of you like he always does. And so it, it's just this constant hope. Um, but you know, when people think that, oh, just because we know Jesus, that our life is just easy and, and, you know, it's just all like, you know, 
strawberries and yeah. rainbows and beautiful things. It's like, no, we go through struggles just like everybody else. But that hope is that, dude, I'm I'm walking with God. So that's what I, Head was saying, like, I don't know how people do it. Because if I didn't have the hope of, of Jesus, yeah, dude, I'd quit right now. You know what I mean? Right. But and when you're I know God is there. I know he's good. <laughs> and I'm and walking with him. You know what I mean? And you know what? It's like everybody's included, man. And anybody watching, yeah. the whole world's included. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave Jesus so that, you know, whosoever, ah, you see what I did there? Whosoever <laughs> believes in him will not perish, but will have yeah. eternal life. Mm -hmm. Who is perishing? Every single person on the planet, whether you're a baby born this minute, you're gonna you're yeah. you're you're on a time, uh, you're on a you're, you're on like a of time or just <laughs> yeah. passing, right? <laughs> what it's like we're all perishing, man. We need yeah. this Christ who is he's uh, what's my new record? Love and death records called uh, Love and Death, uh, perfectly preserved. Mm -hmm. That's in Christ. Everything's perfectly preserved. He doesn't perish, and when mm -hmm. you're in union with Him and one with Him. You're you're a non-perishable substance. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, when you when you give your life to our Christ, body may decay. Our bodies may decay, but not inside. When yeah. you give your life to Christ, He gives you the Holy Spirit, and your name is written in the book of life. So you're eternal being. You are eternal being now, but you're created for eternity, and that's what you're talking about. Is that when we take our last breath one day, and we all do one day, where we live forever, we won't perish. Our soul will not die. We will live forever. And, you know, uh, I think, it was Sonny, you were talking about how just because we're all Christians doesn't mean we're perfect. You know, I've, I've expressed this with you uh, that this season, this last six months, has been really crazy. Like, I've experienced fear at a, a whole new level just with, like, different things that I've been, um, you know, working on and different projects and different mm -hmm. things. There's just been a, just a lot of stress and fear. And, you know, I've never had that before where you're laying in bed and you're, you have all this fear of what could happen. Or you're where you have an anxiety, you know, or you're yeah. just like your mind's just spent. And I don't know how I would have got through that without Christ because yeah. Christ Christ is faithful because even though during this time of like this this uh this this um time of like fog and 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 darkness in my life uh that I went through, God was speaking to me over and over as I read the Bible or I'd be hearing studies or whatever. He was giving me these nuggets and I would hear the same verse like three times from three different people. So he was just breaking through because he's the light in the darkness, you know, and, and then all of a sudden now I'm, I'm coming out of it, you know, but now I look back and I go, you know, what I went through now, I've learned from that experience that I went through gnarlier stuff and God was faithful and he was still with yeah. him. He spoke to me. So in a sense or not in a sense, but the reality is now my faith has grown to another level. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. what's so rad is God used that to grow my faith. And it's all about being spiritual giants. Like we want to grow our faith. Our faith is a spiritual muscle and we have to work it out. And we work it out by living it, by walking it out, mm -hmm. going through hard times, going through the highs, going through the lows, mm -hmm. rubbing elbows with each other. Iron sharpens iron. So a friend sharpens a friend. That's what we're doing here. And, um, you know, and, and it's for everybody. Like, like, like head said, Yep. So, Head, uh, you brought up your new album, uh, Perfectly Perishable. Per what? Preserved. Perfectly, <laughs> perfectly <laughs> preserved. It's the perfectly opposite perishable. of what? Uh, <laughs> yo, I, 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 so listen, I hit you up and I said, I want to watch a live webcast. And you're like, dude, go buy it, man. <laughs> and, and I bought it. <laughs> no way. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, so hey, anyway, okay, no, Lacey, no. Lacey performed there and she charges a lot. I had to pay her. I had to get uh, <laughs> no, I'm, Lacey's I'm just, fee was insane. I'm just I'm joking. Totally joking. I, will, totally joking. I will support the cause always. No, but it was a live stream and it was through that that system. So anyway, we were driving back from Idaho. Um, wait, we're oh no, we were driving back from New Mexico and we got to watch it um on the way back and nice. we watched a whole live concert streaming it in, in the whosoever van, and then all of a sudden. Lacey comes out and you guys start singing and I'm like, what is that song? I know that song from summer. What in the heck is that? And it turns out it's a Justin Bieber song. And nope, it's not. It's what is it? It's a DJ snake song. It's, oh, it's a DJ snake song. Justin Bieber was guested on that song. Only. Oh, what? 
I didn't know that. Well, but yeah, anyway, vocals, yeah. He, uh, hey, anyway, the, the 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 concert was amazing. Uh, the music was amazing. You had you had a couple of different uh, special guests. Who, who are they? Uh, Keith Wallen from Breaking Benjamin. Mm -hmm. um, Jason Rao plays bass, and uh, I wanted more guests, but it's hard to get people uh, from COVID. You know, I would have loved yeah. this. I would have loved that guy right right there, <laughs> Sonny Sandoval. But yeah, COVID, during COVID, um, Lacey and her husband and family just jumped in the RV and drove down. So that was a lot better than uh, than flying and whatnot. And yeah. uh, so, so it was really cool. It was just fun to do, man. We were yeah. we couldn't tour for a year, and uh, it was just really fun to do. And mm -hmm. there was a dream come true actually, just to because I've always loved vocals. I was I, I don't have the easiest time singing, but I work hard at it. And and um, to to sing with Lacey. And Keith and JR and uh, Maddie Mullins and whatnot. And it was just like, it was surreal. It was like another another dream come true because I'd never done that before. You would think I've done everything in 26 years of being a prof professional musician. I haven't. And so I got to do something really cool, man. And so, yeah. Yeah, it was it was awesome. Go ahead, Lacey. I got to tour with Corn like three times and Head wasn't in the band the whole time. <laughs> Right. That's true. That's true. So that was the first time we did anything together. Yeah. Yo, I was bummed too, man. I'm like, you know, I left the band and I knew, and I don't regret that at all. But then, you know, I, I, I heard about Flyleaf and I started listening to their album. And next thing you know, they're on tour with Corn, And I'm like all jealous. Man. <laughs> My friends are just, you know, they're doing this cool tour and I'm, I'm struggling and I, I'm, I'm going bankrupt and all this that stuff. Was that was in your book. I really want that. Yeah, you want to know my chap my chapter name from your book, Ryan? Yeah, yeah, I do. I want I want to read them. So to let everyone know that maybe you might have just tuned in, I have Sonny Sandoval, the lead singer from the band Pod. We have Brian Head Welch from Corn, the guitar player, and then Lacey Sturm, formerly from the band Flyleaf, but now she has her own band called Lacey Sturm. All right, so check this out. We're here for the Kill the Noise session. Um, we ha we're all part of the whosoever's movement and we all started about 13 years ago, started doing music festivals and telling our stories and it just snowballed effect into a worldwide movement of, of just ambassadors, just telling their stories and letting people know that God loves them and he's not religious and he has a plan. I got inspired by Lacey's book, Head's book, and I decided to write my own book, which is called Kill the Noise. And it's at killthenoisebook.com. Uh, you can order it. It's a tool. It's you're gonna hear crazy stories that with all of us in it. Um, it's gonna it's it's a faith stories. It's there to grow your faith. If you don't have any faith, it's gonna introduce you to who King Jesus is. Um, it's going to uh, help you with obstacles in your life, such as de depression, anxiety, fear, uh, suicide, um, addiction, and just uh, other things that that you might be struggling with during this uh, just life circumstances or even during this pandemic. So here's the name of the chapters that are in my book and I'm going to have head. You just pick a chapter name and I want you to relate it to a chapter in your life. So we got let the good times roll, losing control, crossroads, punk rock, Jesus, identity crisis, shiny objects, destroy all gods, God signs in the storms, live in the impossible and no posers. What you got? I choose. <laughs> Identity crisis. Bring I mean, look, look at me. You like this leopard thing? Look at I'm wearing a snuggie. Like it. It's a snuggie. He's still, he's still trying to figure it out. Look at snuggie. It's a snuggie. You remember the snuggies? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just sit at my house. I'm a hermit, and I just order stuff from TV <laughs> and write books. But no, yeah, the identity crisis. What I, what I touched on earlier, I choose that from your book because. Uh, you know, I, I was just my, I, I was, I got an email from my publicist today and she said that this uh, interview I did is going like all over the world in the rock community. And it's the headline was that my Christian, my Christianity went too far. And what I was trying to say in that interview was that I, sh I, I, I wish I would have reworded it because they chose that headline, not me. Um, it was the, just being a fanatic and a fanaticism and and i uh 
I did and said some things that just were stupid. And I should make a do not do meth commercial out of it, actually, because <laughs> I mean, that's why I give myself some 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 grace, you know, because I was coming off of hard drugs. And but like I said, I did damage to my daughter with some of the Christian choices I made and whatnot. And so I, I was in an identity crisis like the like the like that uh, chapter title of your book. And I had to realize like that Jesus doesn't want us to be, you know, I was just like, I'm a hundred percent or nothing. So I just, I did things that I was trying to, it was like a religious war man trying to get God's approval. That's what I was doing. I was doing stupid things to show him that I was all in. And I, and, and, you know, whether it made me look like an idiot, which in turn drags Jesus's name through the mud, you know, I was doing. And so I totally relate to that, not knowing really who I am, you know, and just trying to please God. And that's what I did for a couple of years. And, uh, but I got, I got a sh uh, torn into shreds by trials and tribulations, which in turn formed more of Christ in me and humility started to grow. I should have just hung went and hung out with Sonny. He's like the most humble dude ever. <laughs> that's and, what I did. You know, I should have hung out more with him, but, yes. um, they didn't have me with them. Right? Yeah. So that's what I relate to the most, identity crisis in your book. But, uh, yeah. So do you think, um, with that said, when you're saying, like, you went too far, um, you were just over the top, uh, just being, just trying, like, being religious in a sense and not, like, you weren't, you weren't securing a relationship with Christ. You were just trying to prove that you were a Christian, maybe misled a little bit. Or how would you identify that? No, I was just like, I was so fanatical about it that I, like a week later, I went over the top. Yeah. A, a week after I turned Christian, I told my daughter at a public school and put her in a Christian school away from all of her friends. Got I, uh, I, I, I left the band in a weird, horrible way and just like kind of was was saying bitter things and whatnot. I um I went into this and joined this group of guys in Phoenix and moved everything. I was talking to my dad today. I I put my house for sale and and I read a scripture and it said like leave everything and don't look back or whatever it said. And so I told my friend who was a realtor to go box my things up and give everything away. And I never went back to my house and got my personal things. I, I, well, I did. I had a friend box up what I thought was my personal things, but I lost like diamond earrings and a Rolex walk, watch with all these diamonds on it throughout everything. I was just doing stupid, fanatical things to try to be a, a big man of faith, you know? And so that's what I mean by that. Yeah. I, I remember when we, connected, when we we connected again because you called me right before it all happened. You said, dude, I became a Christian. You're just like... Hey, you know, I'm going to speak at my church, and um, but dude, my parents did they think I'm crazy? And I was like, "Whoa, you, you are crazy! Like you're you're just coming off this. You're you're just on this thing. You're, you're you're trying to experience God." And then I was like, I remember telling you, "Head," I was like, "Dude, dude, do me a favor and just sit at God's feet and just wait." No, I know. Okay, but check it out. And then I saw all the things that were happening, and just praying for you. And then I think it was like four years later, and then we finally connect, and you call me or I called you, whosoever stuff. And then the, I was like, "Dude, what's up?" And you're like, "I went too far, didn't I?" And and then and like you were, I was totally busting up, and I was like, "Dude, bro, God is never gonna fault you for like you you just you just wanted him. Yeah, you know, you wanted him, and, and that's that's where I think the religious religious things come in that tell you have to do this, be like this. And then, cause you're, you're so busy, you know, you don't want to be the meth head anymore. You know what right. I'm saying? So I want to prove to everybody that I did. I'm, I'm, I'm all about it. And sometimes that's when we get ahead of ourselves. Um, and it really is just being patient and letting God do it. Um, but dude, like I said, God is never going to fault you for that stuff. Cause you just, you just wanted it. And he, and, and that's, what's cool about all our stories. It's so much different. Like all of us, we're so alike, like that's because that's the spirit in us, but we're so different in so many ways and our stories are all different. And that's what's, that's why to me, it's real, you know, for anybody who's listening, that's why it's real. It's not made up. We couldn't, we couldn't have written this story, you know, all of us. And that's God's grace is we're, we're still here. And that's why the whosoever started was for me was 
It was just accountability. I just wanted to be around real people that loved God. I never felt comfortable in church, you know what I mean, with all the holy people. And so I needed to be around guys like you and gals like you. That's it. Dude, I knew you loved Jesus, but we were so we just need each other to to just grow, you know, because we're not we're not perfect, man. You know what? Uh, this guy from South Africa came up to me during that time, and when I was just acting a fool, and he said, "I can't do the South African accent. I was going to try it. <laughs> Don't try it." It was. He was like, he goes, Brian. Many people are laughing at you right now, but one day in the future they're going to understand and i think yep. that's come true you know because Straight you know if you, I, I, if you can't laugh at yourself for stupid mistakes you know then i mean it's it's i made mistakes big deal but uh yeah dude yeah, but that's it what makes awesome. it real man i'm that's very comfortable real. in my own skin and i'm very proud of who i am i love myself i don't yeah. you know i don't have self-hatred like I, that that voice behind me saying that you know you're not good enough you're not all this and I mean, I was successful on TV getting Grammys and I still had that voice saying, okay, you may enjoy it now, but next record, you're going to fail or, you know, yeah, all this yeah. stuff, you're not good enough and whatnot. So I am so confident now, man. And it's a, uh, it's a good place to be. I know you guys are too, but I gotta, I actually gotta go pick up my cousin, man. So, uh, so I think Ryan dropped off. What's the deal? Yeah, where'd Ryan go? <laughs> Lacey, you're our host, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lacey, I gotta and go back to my kids. Thanks for coming on. I'm so happy to share. <laughs> Listen, he just, just for, texted. I'll be right back. <laughs> hey, if we're still on here, I just want to say, like, kill the noise. We totally support Ryan's book. Yeah, he has an authentic story to tell. He uh, he's been through it just like us. He's been at the heights of success and and took everything the world had to offer and he ingested it and it left him totally depressed and addicted and he ruined everything in his life just like i did and uh, this book is a real story and it's not it's not holding back and it's but more than that it, he, he gives so many tools on on how you can walk this thing out you know just mm -hmm. like he, he got influenced by my book he's like how am i going to walk this life out with christ and he ran into my book and it inspired him. Now this book is put out for you, all you guys out there that sees this, that it can totally show you how to walk this out with no religion, with just doing it, being like going 100% from the heart and walking this thing out, man. So pick up his book, Kill the Noise. And uh, yeah, we love all you guys out there. We, we don't, everyone's included in this. It's not like we're some holy rollers or whatnot. You all are included. The whole world is included. It's just if you humble yourself and ask God, is this real? Brian, before yeah. you go, I want to say something about what you shared. Is it okay? Um, Me? Is it okay? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, you said that you believed a lie that your daughter would be better off without you. And yeah. Know, you know, and you don't have self-hatred anymore or anything like that. Um but I just wanted to mention that because I think there's people out there who, I mean, that I remember when I thought that I would, I was a burden to my family and that they would be better without me. And I just want to talk about that for a second because somebody might be believing that lie. Um, and it sounds really humble and selfless. Um, it's a lie because um, mm -hmm. when I realized, when I look back that my family's life would have been horrible if i had taken my life mm -hmm. and, and if, if they had lost me that way my sister or my brothers my my you know everybody that i love would have had that horrible thing to get through and over and we can walk through those things but i just want to say that that when you come away from it and you realize that's actually a horrible lie your daughter would never have been better off without you that's mm -hmm. a lie and i just want to mm -hmm. say that to anybody who's that lie's been whispered things would be better without you it's a lie and actually you can recognize it like we're sitting here telling you um but also if you actually consider what it would look like for them to have to walk through life without you it's mm -hmm. not it's not better without you there's no just true no. breathing and i just want to say that while you're here because that was what you said yeah that's so important, man. It's so important and it's true. And I hope everybody receives that like deep inside of their being. 
So, yeah, yeah I, I, I really have to pick up my cousin. I'm late. My brother's going to kill me. But uh, <laughs> I really got to go. Lacey, Sonny, thank you very much. I got disconnected here. My double double burger got wrapped up in the wires and disconnected me. Um, so, hey Ryan, I, I, I told you that already. Ryan, I told him all about your book while you're gone and 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 pumped it up and because I because it's the truth, man. That book is yeah, real, it's so and good, raw, and and it's a it's a great tool for people out there. So we took care of you while you were gone. I, yeah, it's I so figured good. you would. Thank you so much. <laughs> you it awesome. awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, I love you guys. And uh, you too, brother. everyone, you know, just for the listening audience, you know, God's real. All you have to do is Jesus says, anyone that believes in me, if you believe by faith, he died on the cross and he raised from the dead. You just ask him in your heart. He'll forgive you. Ask for forgiveness and he'll fill you with his spirit. And you can live that life that you were created for as you dig into his Bible. The words, those are his words. And he will uh, encounter you in, a, in an amazing personal way. And you can buy the book at Kill the noise, uh, book.com, follow the whosoever's and follow all everyone that's on this screen and get their books and watch their movies and listen to their music. <laughs> They're amazing humans. I love them. <laughs> I love, love you guys. guys. Thank you very love much. You guys. It was so good to see, be with you guys, man. Seriously. Me too. See ya. You want to know words that would describe my life? I would say I'm not perfect. I don't have everything figured out completely rough around the edges, but I know that Jesus Christ is Lord of my life and I'm going to follow him in whatever he does in my life.